Let's do this again. Places, everybody. Robot Cantina, Season 2, Kansas Edition, Take 1. Action! Hey, we're back. So get off your grubby couch, grab a beverage and some nachos, settle into your favorite chair, and buckle up. We're going for a ride in Season 2. So way back in Season 1, we added fuel injection to our 420cc Big Block cement mixer engine in our street legal go-kart. Well, that was a long time ago. Anyway, during the road test, we encountered a problem with the Speedwino NO2C EFI computer while testing at the high-speed portion of the Hillbilly Proving Grounds. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at some old footage. So, right now I have the pedal to the metal, and, well, let's watch. So what happened was, the Speedwino EFI computer got corrupted with some random electrical noise. Now normally there's filters to stop the noise from getting to the computer, however some noise will get through. What we discovered was, <laughs> somebody forgot to change the spark plug. Yeah, as it turns out, the spark plug that comes with the 420 Predator engine is a non-resistor type, and that'll cause problems with our EFI computer. So this El Cheapo spark plug that came with the engine has some interesting attributes. First of all, it's a non-resistor plug, and that's bad for our application. Another thing that's interesting is the size, and more specifically the mass. You see this spark plug is heavy and that's not normally a problem, but on our air-cooled engine the plug was conducting a lot of heat, and it was causing our cylinder head thermocouple to read extremely high. Actually, we were seeing cylinder head temperatures close to the 300 degree Fahrenheit range, and that was alarming. As a matter of fact, we were concerned about how hot the engine was getting, and we dedicated an entire episode to experiment with different ways to keep the engine cool. <laughs> well, that was a cool episode. But as it turns out, the problem with the engine running hot was most likely due to the spark plug. So, out of the frying pan and into the fire, they say, because we swapped out the non-resistor plug with this plug. And this is an Autolite AR3910 with a conventional bridge. Well, I guess the R in this part number is somewhat confusing. Normally, the R means resistor, and that's kind of what we want. But actually, the R on this plug stands for <laughs> racing. And as it turns out, this is a non-resistor plug. So, obviously, we had more problems with the EFI computer. However, we did notice the engine ran significantly cooler, and I mean, it was kind of a miracle how cool the engine ran, when it ran. You know, at some point we figured out this was the wrong plug, and we finally sourced a resistor plug. Well, here's the resistor plug we found, and it sort of solved the majority of our problems. Well, sort of. With the spark plug problems figured out, our next problem was a mechanical failure in the transmission on our little go-kart. And that pretty much shut us down for the season. So the engine and gearbox had to come out of the car in order to locate and repair the problem. Even though this car has a tiny 420cc engine, it's a lot of work to take everything apart. You know, there's a ton of custom parts in this rig to get it to go down the road like a real car. I guess that's what makes this video series so interesting. We definitely pay attention to the details and try our best to make the car as reliable as possible. I mean, others have done similar projects, but nobody has gotten as far as we did. And we're just getting started. There's a lot more engine transplants and mods we want to do. Fortunately, the issue is relatively minor and easy to fix. So basically, the input shaft coupler managed to slide off the splines and we lost the ability to transmit the engine power to the transmission. If you want, check out this episode for the whole story. Anyway, with repairs complete, the street legal go-kart was back on the road. Now all we needed to do was find time to continue testing the car. Well, fast forward a little bit and we're all set to head out to the Hillbilly Proving Grounds. 
What do you say we take the car out for a spin? Click on the like button and we'll do just that. Well, I guess I should mention we'll be trying out a new Hillbilly Proving Grounds today, and I reckon we'll need a few things. That should do it. Oh, I guess I should also mention the new Hibbley Proving Grounds are in Kansas. The short story is, it takes six months and a lot of frustrating roadblocks to get there. But don't worry, on video, we'll be there in a few seconds. No, I didn't drive it to Kansas. That would be insane. So this is the new Robot Cantino studio slash workshop. Apparently this building was previously a fight club location back in the late 90s, but I really shouldn't talk about it, you know. Looks like the crew's got a head start on some projects. Let's see what they got going on. Oh, that's cool. The 212 engine dyno's being prepped for some testing. I reckon this is the little engine that got our street legal go-kart up to 54 miles an hour in episode 7. It'll be interesting to see how much power this thing actually made. Okay, so here's the spare 420 engine that's being worked on. I wonder what they're going to do to it. I guess we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> that's interesting, a diesel engine. Actually, I have to thank our number one patron, Stuart, for this little gem. Thanks, Stuart, and we'll put this to good use. All right, well, let's take a look at what we're going to be testing today. Of course, most of you folks will recognize the 420cc street legal go-kart. Right now, the car is set up exactly the way it was back in episode 28, except this time the transmission seems to be working pretty good. So what we're looking at are just the basics. It has the Speedwino NO2C EFI with more or less a working tune, so we're going to want to establish a new baseline, so unfortunately the supercharger has been removed temporarily. The engine starts and runs just fine, and as I recall, we did a sprocket swap just before the season ended. Sprockets! 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 Stop! We're not doing that bit today. Now, given that we're in a new location with a slightly higher altitude, I reckon it would be a good idea to see how well the car performs and if we resolved all the problems. So let's talk about the new Hillbilly Proving Grounds. As you know, Dorothy, we're in Kansas and not Michigan anymore. So we're based in small town USA. Actually, it's a pleasant and friendly town that has everything we'll need to continue the shenanigans this channel's famous for. Anyway, the yellow brick road is our preliminary proving grounds and is subject to change, but overall it seems perfect. Today we're going to focus on the acceleration and top speed, just to confirm the Speedduino EFI is operating as expected. So the drag race or acceleration portion of the test will start at the Possum Creek Bridge, and that gives us plenty of road to accelerate this slug up to the legal speed limit. Oh, I should mention, we changed the drag race from 0 to 30 to 0 to 60 miles an hour. Yeah, pack a lunch, because it takes a while to get to 60, but it'll do it. For the high speed portion, we'll run the car wide open in the flatlands and see just how fast it'll go. Now, keep in mind, this thing's powered by a cement mixer engine, so expectations are, um, well, we'll see. <laughs> you folks ready? I know I am. Let's see how this street legal go-kart performs.
Now, I've driven this car around town and it performs surprisingly well in the urban environment. In town, the speed limit varies between 20 to 30 miles an hour, and I have to keep an eye on the speedometer because believe it or not, this little engine packs plenty of punch, all things considered. A nice thing about the new location, it's only a two minute drive to get to the Hillbilly Proving Grounds. So now we'll do an acceleration run and we'll start at the Possum Creek Bridge. Now here are the particulars for the test. The car will be starting off in third gear and that'll give the torque converter a decent range before we have to shift the transmission. I'll also do a second gear start and we can compare the data when we review the results. You guys ready? All right, let's go. Okay, we got some data. Some good, some bad. The good news is the engine ran great and there were zero problems with the EFI or the transmission. So 0 to 30 when taking off in third gear takes 11.86 seconds. Now taking off in second gear only takes 11.20 seconds. Not much of a difference. 0 to 40 takes 20.96 seconds when using third gear to start off in. And you're looking at 21.28 seconds when taking off in second gear. The difference is due to having to shift the transmission. It takes time to shift, thus a slightly slower acceleration. So 0 to 50 takes 33.70 seconds when taking off in third gear, and only 33.42 seconds when taking off in second gear. Very interesting. Now 0 to 60 is a mind bender. Taking off in third gear, you'll get to 60 miles per hour in 89 seconds. However, here's the twist. The data is showing it only takes about 60 seconds to hit 60 miles per hour when taking off in second gear. That absolutely makes no sense. We'll get back to that in a moment though. The big news of the day is top speed sets an all-time new record of 65 miles per hour. Okay, settle down. So not a bad day at the Hillbilly Proving Grounds. Now I have to apologize to the folks interested in fuel economy. It turns out all the measuring equipment was lost in the move. The good news is their replacements are on the way. Of course, I need to stress this again. The project's not focused on fuel economy and we only report the results because it's interesting data. Anyway, we're getting close to the 70 mile per hour goal with our 420 Big Block Hemi Cement Mixer powered street legal go-kart. The only thing that bothers me is the zero to 60 times. Now that makes no sense. Well, unfortunately I didn't discover this anomaly until I tallied up the results while editing this video. Now as you can see, whether we start off in second gear or third gear, the results are more or less the same all the way up to the 50 mile per hour mark. 
so from 50 to 60, the result should be close. The 29 second discrepancy is way too large. What caused this? No idea. You see, I didn't run the data logger during these tests, and at this point it's a guessing game. It could be something as simple as a gust of wind, or a problem with the tune, it's hard to say. So just for fun, we went back to the Possum Creek Bridge and did another 0 to 60 run, this time with a data logger running and a camera. Let's take a look. Okay, so right away we can see the TPS or throttle position sensor is less than 100%. And that's weird because the TPS sensor calibrates fine and will go to 100%. I even checked to see if the floor mat interferes with the accelerator pedal and that's not an issue. Okay, so this run will continue all the way up to exactly 60 miles per hour. Then we'll see the TPS drop off as I release the accelerator. I'll save you some time and do the math. This time it took a minute 42 seconds or 102 seconds. So that's confusing, right? Well, sort of. You see, when I got back to the workshop, I discovered the parking brake was partially engaged. Oh! So this was pretty much a waste of time. Anyway, no doubt there'll be some comments on various ways to go faster, including to release the parking brake. I get it. But here's a real way you can help out if you want to join in on the fun. I'm going to go ahead and post the MSQ and a clean data log file over on the Speedduino forum. Keep in mind the tune on the car is not complete and there's a ton of room for improvement. So if you want, take a look and give me some feedback over on the forum. Now all I ask is to be respectful to the forum and please stay on topic. The link to the forum will be in the description. Oh, and by the way, this channel is back in operation and will be posting weekly videos and bonus videos. So be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And as far as the new workshop goes, I love it. This building's over 100 years old and is as solid as a rock. Every day, a billion pound iron horse that stretches at least two miles long sneaks past this building at a fairly good clip. And if it wasn't for the horn, you would hardly notice. The new location is also 100% free of garden gnomes, and that in itself is well worth the move from Michigan to Kansas. Well, until next time.